Good morning, everyone. So welcome, welcome. Kevin, Property Soldier here. So I'm doing my multitasking thing again. I am going out and this is a live um, interview with Alan Bond. And this interview will also be a podcast episode. So some of you will be watching this live and some of you will be listening to this as a podcast, the Service Accommodation Property Podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interview Alan and um, we're going to hear about his journey in SA and what he's currently doing and, and what he's currently achieving in service accommodation. And any questions that you may have, please feel free if you are watching this live to type them in the comments. And I will, uh, there might be the odd question that I can ask Alan um, live as we are going through, but otherwise, it will be a case of me going back afterwards and answering any uh, comments retrospectively for people. Uh, you know, you can still write comments if you are watching this on catch up. Um, if you're watching it live, type your comments in and I might be able to answer them live with Alan. Um, so I'm going to introduce Alan now then, Alan Bond. And so um, can you hear us OK, Alan? I can hear you fine. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, Alan, um, you are ex-Navy. And uh, senior service, I believe. Okay, I thought I'd let I thought I'd it you. Before you did. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so, um, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll do the uh, as a, as an interview, but we won't. Uh, we'll we'll talk separately so that we don't talk over each other um, for the podcast. So uh, yeah, uh, it makes it a bit easier on that side. But um, so you used to be in the navy, and then you went into uh, maritime design consultancy. But also, you uh, decided, so you were doing service accommodation, but uh, you've got an interesting way of describing what you used to be doing. I, I, I won't steal your thunder, I'll explain that. But then <laughs> tell us about how what got you into SA and what you currently um, are doing. So just tell us a little bit about your journey. Okay, so uh, I, ha I have been in property for quite some time. Um, I, I started with uh, uh, student accommodation. Uh, down in Devon, down in Plymouth, a place you know yourself. Uh, I did that for a, a number of years. It, it was very convenient when you're when you're in the navy because you're away a lot. So uh, getting on that ladder was was quite straightforward for the first property, at least. Um, I, I did that for quite a few years actually, and and it worked it worked fine, but um, it didn't give staggering returns. Um, and if I'm honest, I, I didn't really uh, treat it with the respect it deserved. So I, I guess what I'm saying is I didn't treat it like a business. It was it was more like a hobby. Uh, and as such, it um, it re rewarded me like a hobby. Um, that was fine for a few years. But then I, I, I thought I needed a bit more. Uh, I moved to the Bath area and realized quite quickly that that sort of market didn't work as well which is when I discovered SA. Um, and I actually discovered SA through uh, some property training through Progressive. Uh, I went to a Masopi, as a, as a lot of people start with, and you, you see everything that's on offer. Uh, and it just it just clicked with me that I thought this would really work well in Bath because it's, it's, a, it's a holiday destination. Uh, so that's when I got on board with the, with the training uh, and then switched to SA. And as they always say, once you treat uh, a business as a business, it starts to reward you as a business. So that's where we are now. Um, you know, got a handful of properties here in, here in Bath. Um, we run it very much as a business. Yes, I do have a day job still, but we we treat it as a business, uh, and uh, and as such, it, it it pays like one, which is great. Cool. So um, so you actually came along um, to our training at Progressive, our, our service combination training, and that was, we were having a chat earlier, weren't we? 2017 yeah. now. Yes, it was, yeah. And so that's well, when that's we met. In <laughs> I know, I know. 2017, where has the time gone? Yeah. Um, and so ultimately, um, you because you, you did a really cool deal, um, and you ended up featuring in, in my book, Service Accommodation Success, didn't you? Yes, and it did. But so ultimately, a lot of people, there's different forms of SA, isn't there? And what you are focused on is is purchase to SA. 
So tell us a little bit about that and then and, and then tell us a bit about the properties that you've got and and the results that you are getting in uh, right now. Because a lot of people are interested in this staycation boom that is currently upon us. So what are your thoughts on that? And I've just thrown a lot of things at you there, but yeah. over to you. I'm trying to take them uh, one at a time. So. So we moved to Bath uh, principally for my uh, consultancy work. Um, Bath is, is if, if any of you have been there, it's a lovely city. It's very popular. It's incredibly popular with uh, international tourists, um, but it's it's equally popular with with UK um, uh, visitors. Um, so we wanted to get additional properties so we wanted to buy property i i, I always liked the idea of, of owning the property um and so we joined forces with another couple with very similar views uh, and aspirations to us again it's a chap that I'd, I'd known for years in the navy um and we decided to join forces uh pool our resources and uh, look for some property here in bath uh and in, in fact, the first one we came across was uh, uh, the Midford Mill, which is the one you feature in your book. So as it as its name suggests, it's an old water mill. It's uh, 17th century, uh, grade two listed as about 90% of the properties in Bath are. And it was Nigel that found it, my partner, and I didn't like it. Uh, the other three partners, my wife and Nigel's wife, uh, they all loved it, and I didn't like it. I, I was, what on earth are we going to do with this? It's it's huge. It's expensive. It's going to take an awful lot of upkeep. Um, it's just going to be a money pit. But we viewed it uh, a few times, and on the third viewing, I completely had a mind shift. By that time, I'd, I'd done the um, the the some of the training, the early stages of the training. Uh, and actually I'd learned about things like um, capital allowances and, th and things like that. And I thought, mm, actually this might just work. Uh, and the more I thought about it, the, the more I fell in line with the other three. I was gonna get overruled anyway, they were gonna buy it. <laughs> uh, and it, and yes, we did, we, we went ahead and purchased it. Um, it had its issues as, as a building of that age would. Uh, the main one being that it had flooded three times in the last 10 years. So insurance was uh, like £5,000 a year premium. Um, but as engineers, we took one look at it and realised that we knew where the issues were with the flooding and believed that we could put them right. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. So we didn't get into a bidding war. Nobody wanted it because it had been left uh to its own devices for a few years and it was flooding uh, and it just it, it just fell into that all too difficult box for people but we saw through that we saw the opportunity and we took it on um we we did sort the issues uh there are going to be ongoing issues because it's an old property and we keep on top of those we keep on top of the maintenance but we we turned it round and turned it into uh, what we think is an absolutely stunning property on the edge of a river there, just on the outskirts of Bath. Uh, sleeps ten people, and and actually it's it's been our gold mine, I suppose you could say. It's it's always busy. Uh, it gets great reviews, um, and and it's just a it's a lovely place to be. You know, particularly this time of year when the weather is as it is today, sitting on that sun terrace overlooking the river with your gin and tonic is just absolutely fantastic you can't beat it and people love it so yeah it's it's in uh, it's in demand yeah so um we were doing a little you were adding up some of the bookings um for the month of june and um you came it was over 15 grand's worth of, of bookings in the month yeah. of june yeah um and a lot of people are interested i mean this is this is fueled obviously by the staycation boom and and what we're seeing is the night rates just keep going up and up and up and it's all about supply and demand isn't it it is indeed um, yeah. yeah absolutely and so when there's more demand for something the price of that thing goes up and it's a great time i'm sure you'll agree for people to be getting into the service accommodation market because uh, we all know what's happening with staycations but i mean yours is quite a you know a leisure type uh, property um, but you've got other essays as well but I, I find that I'm getting a lot of uh, contractor, long stay contractor bookings as well, because there's a lot of 
pent up business demand. But let's face it, that's just a perfect storm for SA um, in, in terms of both things aligning at the, at the same time. So for people um, thinking of, of getting into SA, I think it's definitely a, a good time um, for that. And how long are, are travel restri restrictions going to be in place? I, I don't know about you, Alan, I've got mixed feelings about it. From a business perspective, I'm just rubbing my hands together. <laughs> thinking people, it's, it's like, um, it's like they're in a, in a party, but they can't leave and they can only buy at your bar and, and, and eat and drink at your bar. You know, it's a little bit like that with SA right now. Um, but I do uh, want it to go back to normality. But let's face it, in the meantime, it, we're cashing in. Those people that are in service accommodation are just cashing yeah. in. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a little bit. But So we've mentioned about a sort of really um, cool property, the mill. But you've got some, some standard... Uh, SA property as well. So, and a bit again on the on the purchase to SA model. I'm going to ask you in, in a minute maybe to talk about um, um, the capital allowances um, angle, but it's just the normal the normal properties that you've got for you know most people that's that's sort of within people's reach. Um, what um, how are you getting on with those properties right now? Uh, so we've got in Bath we've got another three um, two bedroom places uh one's a, a a two bedroom standalone house and the the other two are, are apartments um so there, it's quite a mixed bag really when you when you look at um look at the the, the types of property we have the the two apartments are uh, in the center of bath they are literally 90 seconds walk from the train station so they are incredibly popular for a certain type of people people that don't have cars people that want to come just for a you know a weekend in a in a in a walk around the city because because Bath is quite a small place so it is walkable uh, and equally it it does appeal to contractors you're, you're absolutely right there has been a boom in in contractors and prior to um, the whole COVID thing we didn't get a great deal of of traction from our contractor market it was predominantly from um, uh, visitors and tourists and things. But certainly those those two apartments in the centre of town since uh, COVID have seen a lot more uh, people coming for for work stays, uh, which is great because clearly that fills up the the weeks. So weekends have never been a problem for us, but but filling up the, the, the weeks has always been something of a challenge. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. Um, we, we're having really good uh, occupancy uh, across the board. Uh, and we offer that range of, of property for those that want to drive here and those that want to come by come by other means because um, parking is, is quite difficult in Bath. So, yeah, they're working really well, uh, say, getting great occupancy levels. We've been a bit – have we been a bit cheeky or have we just been business savvy? Uh, we have put our prices up between the, the two periods of lockdowns um, and people are very happy to pay them. You know, it it hasn't been an issue. We thought we would suffer because we get a huge amount of um, Asian and uh, American tourists in Bath. And clearly we haven't had any of those. So we really thought we would suffer. But that's not been the case. Uh, we get we've had such a boom in in um, UK visitors that it is more than compensated for, for what we would have had from our uh, international market. So I like you. I'm really not worried about the lockdown <laughs> and the restrictions on travels. No, absolutely. And I think I was just um, from from my notes that I took just now. You you were getting about six grand a month in turnover from those those properties as well. Yeah, um, each of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, how cool is that? So, purchase to SA then. Um, have you gone down the, uh, the capital allowances route? Are you just are you just save, saving up those capital allowances? <laughs> <laughs> so we we haven't. Uh, with the only one we got capital allowances on was the mill, by the way. Um, but they're sitting at over two hundred, nearly two hundred and fifty grand's worth. Um, but if I can just explain explain that for people, and yeah, so ultimately seven hundred um, two hundred and fifty grand's worth of capital allowances. Um, is an amount of money that you you can now earn tax free from your service accommodation business. Um, so that's that's just just for people that aren't aware of capital allowances, and it's the owner of the property that gets to claim um, the capital allowances. And so that's you guys, right? And so you've still got a fair amount of capital allowances yet to yet well, to claim. We have. Yeah, 
Yeah, because we, we purchased it and obviously we had to have a loan for that uh, and then we did some refurb, so quite a bit of work to get it in shape to to let out, fair say. We, we've actually invested quite a bit in it. So we to this day, we still haven't paid a penny in tax on, on the mill. So we're still we're still claiming back on the, on all our, our spends. So we don't need to, to claim the capital allowances. So the day we need to pay tax on the mill is the day we'll cash in our capital allowances chip. Yeah, cool. So you've still got that. Um, so you're offsetting your expenditure um, to yeah. start off with, and then you can claim your capital allowances. So that would be you'd be able to earn another two hundred and fifty grand tax free. Yeah. Then you can claim your capital allowances on your other um, other properties that you own. So let's just round that up to about a million pounds worth of capital allowances. So so effectively, um, for people wondering, you can you can pretty much go on to earn another million pounds tax free. Um, which what's not to like, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> what's not to like? So I, I, a lot yeah. of people say, yeah, but why service accommodation care? Are, are people not listening? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I use the phrase more money, less tax and no tenants. I mean, what's not to like with that, right? Absolutely. So um, a little bit like you, I've done, I've done, you know, buy to let, I've still got buy to let properties. I've still got some good tenants. Um, the bad ones can, can go. Um, but when I get properties back, buy to lets back, I do my due diligence. And if they work as service accommodation, and some of them just bog standard terrace because the contractors love those. Um, if they work as service accommodation, I'll flip them into that and, and claim the capital allowances. Like you, I'm doing purchase to SA as well, um, buy, refurbish, refinance into SA, um, and then and also claiming the capital allowances. Um, and and guest house B and B um yeah. converting that into sa and so uh, a little bit like yourself alan so you were talking we were having a little chat earlier so you're interested in using a um sas pension to to yeah. purchase a commercial and so those people listening yeah obviously commercial property is commercial property but a uh, certain types of guest house bnb qualify as commercial as well and so they can be purchased using a pension pot and you can keep that property in the pension pot but you can use your management company to manage the property earning an income from it and you get to claim hundreds of thousands literally you know getting depends on the size could easily be a million pounds worth of capital allowances um on a deal like that as well which is the amount of money you can earn tax-free so exciting times alan in terms of uh, you progressing it is so, indeed. Um, yeah. so we've ended up setting up four companies actually so um we've set up an additional company that owns all the furniture to all the properties and then we rent that furniture out to each of the properties on a monthly basis so there's a there's another income stream there uh, and that helps you manage things like um a vat uh, and and it's very tax efficient yeah cool yeah yeah cool i mean there's just so many different um yeah. tax efficient ways of investing in in serviced accommodation. So I've got a question here that uh, Ryan has asked. So would you consider a, a first floor masonette for SA if it's a shared freehold with a lower ground floor? Is there any checks or agreements that need to be put in place? So I'll just quickly answer that uh, for you, Ryan. Um, there's no there's no issues with it. Um, there's no, uh, presumably there's no lease. It's a shared freehold. So is, is there a lease? I'm presuming there's also a lease. So if the lease allows service accommodation, then there's no issues with that whatsoever. And and remember, you can also claim your, your capital allowances on that income, Ryan. So hopefully that answers that question. All right. So, um, Alan, I mean, what is what is the future for you? So you're currently uh, still consulting, but you're earning really good money from service accommodation. Um, how, how do you look to move on from here? So we, we actually just recently updated our um, our company strategy uh, for the f for the four of us. So my wife Sarah has just um, gone down to part time. She's a consultant as well. She does physiotherapy as consultancy. Uh, so she's now gone down to two days a week, and and she's managing the rest of the the, the portfolio for us. Um, me being the eldest is probably the next to drop off the plot. So I'm, I'm looking in the next uh, couple of years to to down tools at the consultancy uh, and, and concentrate full time on the property, probably using our, our SaaS pot to expand in, in, in that respect. Um, uh, and, and then Nigel and Liz will do the same. They're slightly younger than us, but they've 
at the five year point they want to be out of it and that all coincides with with when our children finish university so we have a plan um nigel wants to retire to a cider orchard somewhere in south wales grow his grow his, grow his own apples uh, and i just want to get him a motorbike and travel around the world but <laughs> so we've got other things we want to do lots of plans so this is helping us realize those dreams which is fantastic couldn't ask for more so presumably you're that you're going to be putting in a, a management um, solution in place so that you can all um, so build your portfolio and yeah. then have have it managed so that you can uh, travel the world and do all that great stuff. Indeed. I mean, mo most of what we do is automated now. Anyway, we do an awful lot uh, through system using the systems that I learned through the training. Uh, which has been fantastic, but th there's still an element where you need boots on the ground. Uh, a phrase you'll be very familiar with, Kevin. Um, so we're trying to get it to a stage where actually we only need one pair of boots on the ground. So then we'll find somebody and, and manage that for us. And then we can we can jet off around the world. Plan B would be we stay in the country and look after it for six months while Nigel and Liz go touring. Um, and then we flip and we'll come back and or we'll go touring and they'll come back and manage it. So, But find, finding that one person is, is the ultimate goal, is the person that can run it for us. So we can be completely hands off. And I think that the really valuable thing for people listening into what you've just said is that you've got a plan. Um, and and I often liken having a plan to using a, a, a sat nav in the car. Ultimately, you, yeah. you decide on your destination and the sat nav will effectively navigate you from A to B to get to that destination. And you put in certain things into the sat nav, which is, you know, whatever criteria you want to achieve along the way. And having a plan, you've got an ultimate plan. So that's your destination. So how are you charting your journey between that here and there? And you're, you're figuring all that out. And you've got something to work to. And it's an aspiration. And that, that means that you can continue putting in the, the hard yards. As, as And property investing, I'm, I will never stand here or sit here um, and say property investing is easy. It's, it can be hard work. But I don't know if you'll agree with this, Alan. It can be the best hard work you'll ever do um, yeah. because you get the benefits yeah. in the future, right? Indeed, it's challenging and it's rewarding. And, you know, a uh, classic example, I, you know, I, I went down the mill. The mill is only a, less than a mile from, from my house. Uh, guest in there for a week. They had a problem. A door came off its hinges. Yes, I could have called the handyman out. I was like, it's five minutes for me. Pop down the hill, pop some screws in, bit of wood glue. They're all happy and they're having a fantastic time. And they engaging with them, they, they couldn't be happier with, with where they are and what they discovered. Uh, and it's, that's a reward in itself. You know, uh, they're getting to enjoy this beautiful property that we're, that we're providing for them. Uh, and they're thinking they're getting great value. Uh, and that that's good in itself. Clearly, that the pounds and pounds, shillings and pence is very important. Uh, you, we don't; it's not a charity. We don't do it for free. Um, but yeah, it, it it is challenging, but extremely rewarding. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I I fully agree with everything that you've just said, Alan. One hundred percent. So Alex has asked a question. Um, I'm I'm going to read out the question, and then I I will give you my my answer because <laughs> there's quite a lot in this question. So hi guys. So um you have a guest no tenants are you signing any kind of contract with them even just online or even a a, a tick that they accept the conditions of your contract if yes um is that a contract a license are you asking for a deposit or is it not necessary or is it necessary if yes then i guess no uh, dps needed but then the guest turnaround is quick do you receive deposits and refund back and forth and all the time thank you okay so the answer to that the answers to those questions are is not a quick answer to those questions there's an awful lot of moving parts and it depends in in that in those uh, questions so alex what what i'm going to do um a little bit like i did getting into uh, service accommodation i went and got some proper training and then exactly the same for alan is I've actually got um, a, a training event uh, coming up and uh, to coincide with my book launch and my book launch is tomorrow of my audio book. I'm actually actually offering some some free training to to boost the book launch. So it's I don't want anyone to go and buy my audio book until tomorrow. But ultimately, watch this space and there will be plenty of posts and plenty of noise um, in the progressive uh, property community and, that, and on my channels. 
uh, on the progressive page, etc., of the book launch and all of the bonuses. Um, and so one of the bonuses is going to be you can come and get a, uh, I'm calling it my SA Boom workshop, um, some free training there. And I'm also going to be announcing how people can joint venture with me in order to get their first uh, rent to SA property from a letting agent or from a landlord. Um, ultimately, leveraging my credibility, being coming a partner with me in order to be one of my team. Um, and so that's going to help people get their first property. And often, quite often with rent to SA, the first one is the hardest one to yeah. get. Um, so that's that's something I'm quite excited about moving forward um, and building our brand together. And so absolutely, Alex, what I would suggest is you um, you take the opportunity, get the book tomorrow, and then you'll be able to, to come on board. And I've got lots of other bonuses for people that buy the book tomorrow as well. So watch this space. Tomorrow I'll be announcing all of the bonuses and also um, how you get your uh, free training with me at um, progressive property and get on my SA boom workshop. So that's, that's my advice, Alex is just, just come and get some proper training because it's, there's a, you've actually just scratched the, um, the surface there with the questions that you, that you need to get answered, but there's, you don't know what you don't know. And there's an awful lot yeah. more questions that you would need to know the answer to in order to do service accommodation properly. So a little bit like Alan, um, so what, what was it the phrase that you used about tr uh, treating it like a hobby, et cetera? Yeah, but uh, all the time I treated my property business as a hobby, it paid me as a hobby. And when I treated it as a business, it paid me as a business. And that, that was, I just want to echo what you said, because my own personal experience, that was all down to the training. Um, you, you look at the, 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 the face cost of training, you think, gosh, that's expensive. I, I went to that first training course and I sat there and within an hour, I didn't realize it at the time, but within an hour, I just saved myself £200,000 on the capital allowances that I did had no clue about beforehand. I mean, it just, the fees just paled into insignificance when, when you come away with those sort of nuggets. Uh, and, and they just kept coming. You know, um, the reason we are we are doing well is because we, we set up properly from, from the get-go. And the reason we set up properly was because we'd been trained. Yeah, th thank you for that. And I appreciate that. Um, awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be wrapping up this uh, very shortly. But for those people that uh, want to reach out to you, Alan, so your your website um, is www.mypad, spell M-I-P-A-D, dot co dot UK. So if anyone wants to check out your properties and maybe do a direct booking, that would be the cheapest way for you to to basically come and go and stay at one of Alan's fantastic properties. And you know, one of the things I actually say to people who want to learn about serviced accommodation is go and stay at some somebody's property um, yeah, who is absolutely. doing serviced accommodation. So you can actually you can learn an awful lot of good good things um, about how other people. So so I'm no doubt Alan's uh, reviews are, are great on on the you know the online portals like booking.com airbnb etc and so you can go and, and learn from people who are doing it successfully uh and 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 before going and setting up your own service accommodation business and then um alan's own email if you want to reach out to alan is alan at mypad again spe spell m-i-p-a-d dot co dot uk um, so, Alan, thank you very much for um, sharing your journey and um, some of your uh, service accommodation success um, that you are getting right now. Um, you've already uh, sort of given your uh, advice to people, which is they should go and get some some training. So that's that's pretty cool. I can't ask for any more than that. And for people that buy my book tomorrow, um, my audio book, um, you will be able to get some free training um, from me and my SA Boom workshop, um, as well as lots of lots, lots of other really cool uh, bonuses as well that um, I will announce uh, tomorrow. So thank you very much for that, Alan. It's been really cool okay. catching up with you again. Yeah. Hopefully, you again. hopefully we will get to meet up and and have a beer um, on my on my route to uh, to Swansea next. I haven't been to Swansea for ages. I might have to uh, <laughs> do a detour. <laughs> absolutely and you're very welcome <laughs> and we'll have a beer all right so cheers thank you very much for watching everybody thanks to alan um any more comments type them in the uh comments section and i will endeavor to uh to answer those later on so here is to your 
Service accommodation success. And remember, your future needs you. Oh, get the finger in. <laughs> Cheers, Alan. Take care. Thank you. Bye now.